Just a little flip my story from my mouth live, as you already know. Yeah, I ain't, he don't even need no introduction. Y'all already know what it is. You know what I'm saying? And plus, y'all been waiting. <laughs> All right. Flip, what up? What's up, my guy? Ain't nothing. What's good with you? Hey, you know me, man. Working smart, not hard, and, and staying out the way at the same damn time. All right. Yeah, I see you on Clover G time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do you know what's so crazy? The I saw the thing you sent me. Right. I, I didn't know that was the actual link. I thought you were showing me the platform it was going to be on. So I, 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 I'm waiting on a whole new link to come. I say, oh, I guess that's the link. <laughs> right, 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 right. All right, all good, all good. How you doing, though? Man, bless my guy. Bless, man. Working smart, man. You know me. How you doing? I'm good, man. I can't complain. Staying sucker free. Hey, I understood. I got a tattooed on me. So. <laughs> I don't do tattoos. Or I would have one of those too. You suck ass niggas in this industry. Yep. Yeah, but um, so you know, my story from my mouth is, you know, basically that. You know, you telling your story from your perspective, and you know, it's a lot of people out here that be telling your story and be screwing it up and making right. false truth. Like before this even started, somebody was like, yo, little Flip is locked up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, well, since Flip is locked up, I'm gonna let them think Flip locked up. And you know what I'm saying? And then everybody in the, in the thing is, yeah, Flip, like, oh, free Flip. This is like that easy. Boom, it, it, it's that easy. Yeah, now nah, that's how it go, man. With, with this industry, man, you gotta have thick skin. You gotta have level five bulletproof armadillo skin in this shit, man. Yeah, right. True story. Yeah, so um, tell the people where you're originally from and where you uh currently reside. I'm from H Town, Houston, Texas, to be exact, and I still stay in H Town. You know, born and raised. I'm a a world a worldwide uh what I like to call myself a time traveler a jumper you know I, I be everywhere but at the end of the day H time my home and uh that's where I met man. All right, how how would you say was your upbringing? Poor, middle class, or rich? My my upbringing was right in the middle. Like mm -hmm. I. We was right in the middle. We wasn't rich, but we wasn't poor. You know what I mean? So, um, like my grandparents, like I stayed with my grandparents. My dad and mom, they was around, but they, you know, they split up when I was younger. But I spent most of my time with my grandparents. You know what I mean? Um, at my mom's house, like she didn't have as much money as my grandparents, right? So I got the experience. I ain't gonna say poor, but like having less than what I was used to. You know and so, but I always hung around other people who had less as well. And, you know, I would always look out for them. Since I had more, like I'm the one that would always, I go to the store, my homie ain't got no money. I, psh, you you finna eat, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to the store. Even back when, when I, I started all my rap groups that I was in before I, you know, became a solo artist, like I was the one with the money. And if I'm going to buy one, if it's three members in the group, I'm buying a jersey for me. You getting a jersey, you getting a jersey. You know what I mean? Like, so that's just how I was, even though I had, you know, more than others. Shit, my, my goal was always to try to uplift the next person. So, you know, my grandpa on me. Um, I got multiple army veterans in, in my family, uh, barbers, musicians. Like in my family, you born in my family, you doing music. My grandma, she played the piano for the church. So I learned how to play the drums, the piano, sing. I'm in the studio, you know what I'm saying? My God, honest Terry Ellis, you know what I'm saying? Within Vogue. So I've been in studios and being backstage. And my grandpa, my grandpa, he had worked for Maxwell House Coffee for like 30 years. So at the age of like five, six, seven, eight, I'm riding in parades on the Maxwell House Coffee float. That's one of the main reasons right now I don't drink coffee because as a kid, my grandpa used to get all the new coffee before it came out. So, mm -hmm. hell, I was drinking it as a kid. I was like, oh, yeah, we got the new shit. This don't come out for like a year. <laughs> I mean, so, right. boxers, athletes, um, 
my grandma turned her garage into a beauty shop. So I watched her, you know, play the piano for the church and then have her own beauty shop. And then she turned that beauty shop and bought another one. So she kept the one in the garage and then made another one. So my grandma had two beauty shops. And so I'm like, damn, you really can, you know, make it like, you know, a lot of times the world, like they, they brainwash you into this. If you don't have a nine to five, it's not a real job. It's not possible to be successful. If you're not working in these hours, you know, people look down upon hip hop, you know, oh, that's not a real job, blah, 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 blah. And so between that and me seeing my dad sell cars, he was, he was a master car salesman. Like it's a difference. Some people are just car salesmen. And then some people are master. He went to DC and got certified as a master car salesman. Like, so what I learned from my dad with this hustle, like imagine him selling cars and you selling cars. Y'all work at the same job. You go to work nine to five. He goes to work uh, 8 p.m. and after hours, right? So you go to work nine to five. You sell your four cars. You write it on the board. Big West name ain't up there. The next day you come back to work and it's like, damn, Big West sold eight cars. Like, how did he sell eight cars and I didn't see him? Because he would go in after hours, you know what I mean? And, right. and he wasn't greedy, so he knew how to work the deal to where, hey, I, I might not make a shitload of money on this car, but guess what? I'm going to show you love, but you bring me five more people. I'm going to give you a kickback. So he taught me at a young age that when you give people incentives and percentages of companies, they go work harder to, to get that money and bring you more people. So they car note could be free. So I just applied everything I learned from my uncles being Black Panthers and Army and boxers and me playing sports. Like I played every sport, like basketball, football, baseball. Um, football was the quarterback, the running back, the kicker, and the safety. Back then, literally, you had to play multiple positions and shit. There wasn't enough people on the team, but like I played all those positions. Baseball, I played center field. I played baseball two years. I ain't really like it. I could pitch. But I seen a couple of my partners get hot line with the ball being pitches and it, it cracked they like they whole corny and shit. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna be out here in the center field. But it was boring. Yeah. Nobody ever hit the ball. So right. then Houston hot as fuck. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stick with the basketball. You know what I mean? So I was a three point champ two years in a row. I was a free throw champ two years in a row. And um every team I played for, I was team captain. So but besides that, um taking martial arts i'm a third degree black belt in taekwondo i used to box as well so every sport everything i played i always was the team captain so i'm i'm one of them people that that know how to you know see a weakness in somebody and figure out a way to communicate with that person without you know belittling them or making them feel less than a man so my upbringing was like a big pot of gumbo of like you got to be this you got to be a soldier you got to be a a uh, militant Black Panther. You got to be a thinker. You got to learn how to sell. You got to learn how to um, negotiate your prices, man. And so I'm, I'm just a big ass sponge, man, of, of all these people that I grew up in. And, and then you know I'm from Houston, so you know my bloodline. Then you know we affiliated with Jay Prince. I watch Jay Prince turn rap a lot to what it is. So you know my mind frame on how to make your own money, empower your people, and mob like you need to mob. You dig? You know what I'm saying? You know, so my upbringing was just a wide variety range from the hood to my elementary. I went to white, like a predominantly white elementary because after the first year in like elementary in my neighborhood, they told my parents I was too smart. So they put me like in, in Houston, like River Oaks is like predominantly, you know, upper echelon neighborhood, you know what I mean? Um, kind of like what the Hamptons is, you know, people aspire to go to the River Oaks, you know, and so when I went to elementary there, you know, I'm learning Spanish, French, I'm, I'm learning how to direct like that. I started directing way back in elementary because we was like doing the plays. I was making the props, like every aspect of the camera. I wanted to know how to work it being in front of it. I want, I just, man, I'm just a a sponge my guy so my upbringing was just some educational shit from the hood to the corporate world do you think that uh a lot of that structure came from your grandparents being that they 
was a generation above your parents. So they lived, a, a, you know, they lived a little longer. So they lived, they've been through a lot more. You know what I mean? Man, it, it was everybody. It, it was like, it was like mainly them, but it was like everybody. It was like, I got different chunks of, you know, gain from everybody. Okay. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a monitor what they doing. And I'm a, I'm a see, okay. I'm gonna take that characteristic from them and apply it to mine. You know what I mean? So I got different little pieces from everybody. And then I, I did it my own way. And yeah, definitely. Like I would say hanging with older people, period. Like even when I was young, I never hung with like people my age like that. Like they was like focused on going to the skating rink and I used to go to the skating rink and stuff like that sometimes, but it wasn't no, we go every weekend, I gotta be here. Like I was trying to get some money to people that I was influenced by dope boys. These guys pulling up in Lexuses with, with swangers and candy paint and you know what I mean? Diamonds in their mouth and their teeth and you know, Versace shirts and like, you know what I mean? Like, so I viewed, you know, the, the dope boys and, the, and the, the basketball stars as like this. This how this grown up shit right here. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing grown about being in, uh, in the uh, passenger side of your best friend ride, looking like a scrub, man. God bless the child got his own. So right. I had to get my own. Right. So as a kid, what did you think you were going to be? Basketball all day, like all day, and and. What happened was like, like I started seeing a lot of people I grew up with, like, you know how you, you go to school with somebody and they might be a little bit older than you or whatever, a couple grades older than you, like, I know he going to the pro, you know what I mean? I know he going in. Right. After seeing so many of my homies and just people I knew who were great at sports, they would go to college. And you gotta be mentally prepared for that shit as well. And they'll do one semester or go for a year and come back, some injured, some like man fuck that shit some like man i'm I'm broke out there i can't do this shit you know and some you know they they prevailed and, and very few made it you know what i mean but right. looked at the ratio of like okay then that music started picking up like money like money i'm on the scene i'm doing here because i'm battling like i was before anybody like really knew me as a rapper rapper like i'm battling like and you know the way we battle out here we freestyle off the top of the head we don't remember shit. but i applaud all the rappers like i fuck with all the battle rappers the case shines the disasters the murder moves out the whole culture i fuck with them all I, every time i see them i'm like man i salute y'all because i can't remember all them motherfucking bars like right. like but, but like i was out there battling like i'm going to the club getting money winning plaques titles trophies medals just straight giving it to him. And um, once it started like really paying and me hanging with DJ Screw and the, and the Body Boys from my neighborhood as well. So it's like, shit, I was already in the midst. You know, I was touring already with Bun B and the UGKs and already with the in crowd, you know what I mean? So it was like, shit. So you, would you say that uh, music was your first career choice? Um. I'm not gonna say it was a career, cause see, I in my family, you if you born like like I tell everybody every day, I'm Flip Mayweather, man. I'm born in it, and that's one in it. Like you know how his whole family do you, you boxing, you know, like you're born in my family, you're doing music. So we was doing it just for the love of music and, and for church and for God. So right. I would get paid for it, cause we was just doing that on Sundays, and you know I'm making my hip hop shit, battling whatever, whatever, trapping, like, but when I started seeing a lot of my homies, like just coming back and they, them being phenomenal athletes, I'm just like, you know what? I'm steady chasing this basketball and I want to be in the league, but man, I, they trying to give me bands for just to rap, just to put some words together, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, shit, I ain't got to sprain my ankle. You know what I mean? Shit, it just started making most sense. I'm hanging with DJ Screw. Um, he crowned me the freestyle king. I'm, I'm traveling with Pimp C, Bun B. I'm, you know, I'm in the Hot Boys baller blocking movie. You know what I mean? I'm in Def Jam, Fight for New York video game. Like shit just started picking up for me. I'm just like, man, I'm, psh, I'm shooting movies. Let, yo, let, let's clear up because I, I think you'll agree with me when I say this. 
when when you hear uh when when dudes say freestyle right to us you know what i'm saying from the original hip-hop era freestyling to us is rhyming off the head coming off the head and and doing it they kind of made it now to where a freestyle is where it's a written but ain't on the subject you know what i'm saying it's just nigga just spitting some bars or whatever it ain't like a a, a a song a concept song or whatever but freestyling is off the head flow nothing written you just coming straight off the dome like you supernatural you know what i'm saying though uh snoop is a freestyle rapper if many people really pay attention to him he just go in there and freestyle it and then chop up the shit right. that makes sense and then put it together but right. you, you can tell when the nigga said hopping snapping hopping like a rapid when you get the nina no you know i got that habit like yeah. a nigga ain't writing that you know what i'm saying that's a nigga just getting in there and just just flowing it and just bond and just keeping the best stuff but right. do you agree with me when it comes to the word freestyle oh yeah they can try to change it to a cadillac is a cadillac it don't matter what what kind of rims you put on the grill you put on like you know like you can try to reform it freestyle is improv off the top of the head spur of the moment nothing premeditated you know what i'm saying like it's sometimes you know you might be freestyling a couple lines you know that you said before them come out but like for the most part you you yeah. know it 98 percent of that shit got to come out the top. <laughs> right right real you can't call it a freestyle in your homeboy in the back in the background reciting it with you yeah like. Like, okay. All right. Um, how how far did you get in your education? I graduated high school, 1999. Worked in high school, still cool with the school. About to design their basketball uniforms. Still give away scholarships to them. Go through the, the school hall anytime I want. You know what I mean? Cool with the principal. Um, we just got a new principal. So, yeah, 1999. So, no college? No college. Nah, I went to street college, man. All right. So, so when you got your diploma, what you decided to do? I was already popping from the rap. Like, I was already on the scene. I, in high school, I, like, I'm rapping already on the radio, doing freestyle battles and calling in, rapping and rapping at car shows. And then when I became a senior, like, that's when my first big record got played on the radio. Diamonds in Your Face was a record I had with C-Note. And um, that shit was playing all over the radio. The same time when Wanna Be a Baller, Shot Caller, when that record came out in 1999, C-Note and my record Diamonds in Your Face came out. So if Wanna Be a Baller wouldn't have came out and rest in peace to Big T and Hawk and Pat and everybody that's on that record, if Wanna Be a Baller wouldn't have came out. That, that little Troy song, right? Correct, correct. Uh, yeah, if, if that shit wouldn't have came out at the same time, Diamonds in Your Face would have been bigger. You know, like you know, a bigger record. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, yeah. One of, uh, one of your baller was a monster, nigga, everywhere. Out of that, and the dope part about that C note actually is on Latroy's album too. So it, it's it's crazy that C note had a single out that was competing with Want to Be a Baller, and he still was on Latroy album sitting fat down south. So it was dope though because then Troy came back on his second album. And he, he paid me to be on the second album on the record Colleen to the Left, which was my first video I got on BET. And um, yeah, so I'll never forget that, you know. Latroy, I appreciate you putting me on BET on the Lean to the Left. And um, but yeah, I had that record on on the radio, 97.9, playing everywhere. Like I, I was in probably like 25 markets, so I was able to utilize that and piggyback with a group album called HSC, Hustler Stacking Ends. Dropped that shit in like nine nine, and then I came with my Leprechaun album in two thousand, and then just took off after that. I was like, you know what? I'm I'm cool on the group shit. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go. You know, I gotta go. Like, <laughs> right. Wait on nobody. You know, because the person that's most accessible and always ready to go mm -hmm. is the person who go last long. Because right. a lot of people they got they got they got you know, things and strings that 
man, damn, I can't go out of town tonight. I got to babysit. I ain't got nobody to watch my dog. I ain't got no, man, listen, guess what they go do? What that promoter go do? Okay, click. Yeah. <laughs> go anybody else. You got damn right. Always ready, man. And then that's how I, that's how I move. Like I don't want no pets, cause when I want to go, I want to go. And if I if I gotta go somewhere, and they say, "Yo, we need you to stay for six months," I'm good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I ain't, I don't want nothing to tie me down. If I got a chick that and she don't understand that, skirt, see her too. Goodbye. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's always been this first for me. You know what I'm saying? Cause these relationships, they they always seem to end. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You think about all the stuff that you you let go, you know what I'm saying, to appease somebody else. And then you want you turn around, you ain't with them no more, and you think all the opportunity that was lost. Yeah. That you could have did while you was with them, but they feelings don't or they don't understand your lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? And you got automatically you're gonna be fucking with some chick or something, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I keep it to where if you don't understand this game we in, then I, I'm not gonna be saying explaining myself because yeah. I'm gonna miss something. I preach. You know what I mean? So at, at 